Johnny. <laughs> what to do, what to do. What topic to sell out to today? Oh, you should totally make a video about Five Nights at Freddy's. I hear the milk is still fresh with that topic. Yeah, it's been like a year since you posted your last Five Nights at Freddy's video. You should do it. Oh my god, Foxy. You have no idea what sarcasm is. Five Nights at Freddy's is pretty much a dead cow at this point. The milk has gone sour. We are way past the expiration date. Why would you say something like that? Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the most successful indie franchises in all of video game history. Except it is crash and burn so hard. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. Before we both get into a heated, elongated argument, could you explain why you think Five Nights at Freddy's got so popular? Well, there are quite a few reasons, actually. I'll start by mentioning how available the games are. The original game is available on Steam for $5. The sequels are available for 8 All these games don't take up a lot of processing power, so you don't need a top-of-the-line gaming PC to play them. And there are mobile versions to the games. This means the games are extremely available for people to play just as long as the internet is accessible. Also, the game is very stable. It doesn't crash unless it wants to, like with the appearance of Golden Freddy. Now hold on! The games are very short and have very little replay value. Once you understand the pattern of the animatronics, the game's no longer scary. Heck, it's very debatable that the game is even scary in the first place just because it's the same repetitive jump scares. Remember PewDiePie's video where he played the fourth game? He finally came out and said the game was boring, and his fans even hated him for it. They want him to pretend to be scared. Also, there's Alex from I Hate Everything. He had some really good points about FNAF's horror in his video. Well, that depends on who you ask. But to continue with what I was saying, not only is it a widely available game series, but it also caters to a wide demographic. There are two groups of people involved here. Anyone who has grown up in the 80s and 90s know how terrible animatronics used to look. Early animatronics commonly fell into the uncanny valley. <laughs> Your cooch is an uncanny valley. What was that you Chuck E. Cheese REJECT?! Whoa! What happened to your voice? Let's just say that Foxy has a little trouble in the downstairs area. Bonnie? You know, the nether regions. Bonnie! She has the ability to change genders. Bonnie! Wait, uh, how do animatronics even have a gender? Don't know, we're just built that way. Just like how you're gay for the other Foxy? Hey, just because Tumblr says I'm gay does not mean it's true. Okay then, let's just, uh, let's get back to the subject. As I was saying, people who grew up in the 80s and 90s knew how terrifying early animatronics were. Some of these people grew up with a childhood fear of animatronics. Five Nights at Freddy's takes this childhood fear and throws it into people's faces. The other large demographic Five Nights caters to is kids. These games are very tame for horror games. It's so tame that concerned parents would be okay with their kids playing it. Connor the Waffle made a great video pointing this out. Anyway, I need to say this now, that the kids in the FNAF fandom are the worst things ever! Oh, Bonnie, how could you say that? Children are such angels. Angels? First off, look what they've done to you in the past. Yeah, well... And second, kids have access to the internet where they can interact with people older than them. This is really bad because they don't have any clue how the real world, aka the adult world, works. They get offended easily, they don't know how to properly voice their own opinions, and they can be very, very annoying. There's probably a lot of kids making angry comments about this right now. PREPARE YOURSELVES with seeing all caps, bad grammar, no spell trick, and an obscene amount of swear words or swear root substitutes because children have no better way of expressing their thoughts. But aren't you just a child soul possessing an animatronic body? Yeah, that was the case 25-ish years ago, but guess what? Ghost children grow up too. Oh, okay. But you can't be bad-mouthing our audience like that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, I should definitely talk about how Five Nights at Freddy's spread. It can mainly be broken into two parts, and it's interesting. Currently, Let's Play videos are extremely popular on YouTube. This is mainly because YouTube favors channels that upload long videos on a frequent basis. That's because they're so damn easy to make! It takes next to no skill to make a Let's Play channel. Especially since YouTube just LOVES frequently uploaded videos that tend to be long. There's a reason why this genre is so oversaturated on this site. Though that may be true, Bonnie, you could have said it in a nicer way. Dude, I don't care anymore. 
YouTube is just a wasteland of let's plays, prank videos gone sexual, top 10 listicles, and drama bullcrap that gets more popular than actual quality content. What? You don't think this video was content? Well, if it is, maybe you should put it on RedTube since Foxy's involved. Don't you mean YouTube Red? Nope. RedTube. Oh, spree luck at you purple double shafted dildo. Why don't you go back to playing with your esoteric sex toy? It's not a sex toy, it's a selfie stick. I want to be hit with the kids. Anyway, Let's Play videos act as a free advertisement for the video game that's being played. And horror games tend to succeed very well when featured in Let's Play videos. It's not only about the game, but also about seeing the hilarious freakout reactions we see when the players get scared. Let's Play videos involving horror games do really well. Just think of when Amnesia, Slenderman, and SCP Let's Play videos were everywhere. It's like Let's Plays and horror games are in one of the best symbiotic relationships on the internet. The videos build an audience, that audience turns into a fandom, and that fandom ends up creating more fans. Fans that share their own art, stories, music, and other media that's inspired by FNAF. And all of that also serves as free advertisement. Look at sites like Tumblr and Reddit. They make it easy for people to share and communicate their interest in Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, the fandom builds upon itself. But here's the problem. Five Nights at Freddy's was made by only one person. I give him credit for making all the games on his own, but it's just that. He only made the games. Sky never focused on moderating and managing the fan base. There was no way to stop false accounts from getting made, false rumors spreading, fan art getting stolen. The FNAF fandom was out of control, and there's nobody that was able to control it. But realistically, are any fandoms controlled? Eh, there's some fandoms where it's obvious there's a driving force that's nudging them in certain directions. May I take a closer look at a specific part of the FNAF fandom? Sure, go ahead. Of course now, we can't talk about the FNAF fandom unless we also talk about the theories. Five Nights at Freddy's is just one big murder mystery, which means there's so many fan theories out there. People talking about the story and sharing their theories is helping that free publicity concept I was talking about earlier. It's true that this part can be grouped with the fandom part I discussed earlier, but I think the theories really gets the conversation going. Hold on! I really need to get this off my chest now! The FNAF theories are probably the most stupid part of Five Nights at Freddy's. Remember how we mentioned that a lot of the fandom is just a bunch of kids? Well, kids tend to not be very educated. They're dumb. They are so dumb, they don't realize it. So try to imagine them attempting to solve a very obscure murder mystery when they don't even have a good concept of logic. The posters on the wall show teardrop stains, so that must mean the phone guy is the killer. And don't forget the top 10 cupcake theories, they are the best! Excuse my straw man here, but it's all stupid. Not to mention that all these theories are milked out the butt by some of the biggest guys on YouTube, and everyone just drinks it all as fact. They are all nonsensical BS, and every single goddamn theory maker can go f Well, Bonnie, you certainly have an interesting vocabulary. That was horrible, Bonnie. You are horrible. Yeah, well, hashtag no filter. These theories are terrible, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks that. Well, all this talk about theories reminds me about something with YouTube. Even though Twitter, Reddit, and Tumblr all played a big part in making FNAF a viral hit, I'd argue that YouTube is the main drive behind why FNAF became so widespread in such a short amount of time. Part of it is how the site is designed. YouTube is one big information cascade. If lots of people watch a video, that video ends up being promoted more and more. The same applies with trends. If a lot of people post videos about the same topic, those videos end up getting promoted more. It creates an incentive for creators to make FNAF videos, because FNAF is popular. Once FNAF started trending on YouTube, any video that was related to FNAF performed really well. Which explains the crazy milking I mentioned earlier. People who were absolute nobodies gained mass audiences just because they made FNAF videos. The YouTube comment system also plays a big role, especially in the context of fan theories that float around. The YouTube algorithm favors videos with lots of comments and lots of likes and dislikes because they're hard to fake, unlike subbotting and view farming. So every time people get into a long discussion about some FNAF theory or fans and haters start arguing about the game, in the end it all just helps the videos get bigger and bigger, dislikes do this too. 
it's a big cycle. And just look at all of these YouTubers that have FNAF-related videos as their top videos. Yeah, and the biggest part about all this is the topics I just talked about are not isolated from each other. They all form an interconnecting web that makes the Five Nights at Freddy's fanbase. It's all one big positive feedback loop that just keeps growing and growing exponentially. The game creates fans, the Let's Plays create fans, the fan art and fan videos make fans, the theories make fans. And here's the big thing, all of this interaction and growth affects Scott's decision to make another game. This is the reason why the four main games were made in such a short time span. The biggest downfall to Five Nights at Freddy's is how overhyped and oversaturated the series is. The four main games were made within the span of a year. That's insane! Even though they were very short games. People look down upon franchises like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed for having annual releases. Five Nights is just like them, but on crack. Which reminds me that the games themselves are really not that different from each other. You're just a person, sitting in a place, just waiting for something to happen. You know that moment when a pop song is played on the radio over, and over, and over and over and over and over again? Just the same four chords playing on repeat until it gets so overplayed you really start to hate it? Yeah, same thing happened with Five Nights at Freddy's. What about FNAF World? Don't get me started on that pile of crap called FNAF World! It's almost as terrible as React World! The idea was good! But the execution was terrible. Scott really didn't study on what makes a good RPG good. The game didn't have solid design and ended up being one big seizure danger. The fact that Five Nights at Pink Boys and Undertale exist did not help it at all. Five Nights at Pink Boys was absolutely hilarious if you like crude humor. And it seemed like Scott was just trying to make a kids friendly version of that. FNAF World has nothing on Undertale. So... You like Undertale more than your own game. Uh, I mean, Undertale is sort of okay, I guess. Oh, so now you're gay for Doggo. No! What did I say about mentioning Tumblr crap? You know what? I am sick and tired of hearing you guys fight. And I have enough robot furries in my life, so if you two could get out of here as soon as physically possible, that would be fantastic. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> They're gone. I need to see a doctor. I'm, I'm seeing characters from video games now. This is what being a YouTuber is, I think. I hope. Uh, well, why do you think FNAF got so popular? And what do you think the future holds for this series? Let me know down below. And until next time, thanks for watching and stay awesome. The milk has gone sour. We are way past the expiration date. Why would you say something like that? Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the most successful indie franchises in all of video game history. Except it has crashed and burned so hard. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. Before you both get into a heated, elongated argument, could you explain why you think Five Nights at Freddy's got so popular? Well, there are quite a few reasons, actually. I'll start by mentioning how- Sean. <laughs> What to do, what to do, what topic to sell out to today? Oh, you should totally make a video about Five Nights at Freddy's. I hear the milk is still fresh with that topic. Yeah, it's been like a year since you posted your last Five Nights at Freddy's video. You should do it. Oh my god, Foxy, you have no idea what sarcasm is. Five Nights at Freddy's is pretty much a dead cow at this point. How available the games are. The original game is available on Steam for $5. The sequels are available for 8 All these games don't take up a lot of processing power, so you don't need a top-of-the-line gaming PC to play them. And there are mobile versions to the games. This means the games are extremely available for people to play, just as long as the internet is accessible. Also, the game is very stable. It doesn't crash unless it wants to, like with the appearance of Golden Freddy. He had some really good points about FNAF's horror in his video. Well, that depends on who you ask. But to continue with what I was saying, 
Not only is it a widely available game series, but it also caters to a wide demographic. There are two groups of people involved here. Anyone who has grown up in the 80s and 90s know how terrible animatronics used to look. Early animatronics commonly fell into the uncanny valley. Pfft, your cooch is an uncanny valley. What was that? Now hold on! The games are very short and have very little replay value. Once you understand the pattern of the animatronics, the game's no longer scary. Heck, it's very debatable that the game is even scary in the first place just because it's the same repetitive jump scares. Remember PewDiePie's video where he played the fourth game? He finally came out and said the game was boring, and his fans even hated him for it. They want him to pretend to be scared. Also, there's Alex from I Hate Everything. 